All right, let's get started with this next problem. It's problem number 461. It's called Hamming Distance. Um, it has a 69.5% acceptance rating and it's considered an easy. So hopefully this should be quick. <clears throat> All right, so the Hamming Distance between two integers is the number of positions at which the corresponding bits are different. Given two integers x and y, calculate the Hamming Distance. Okay make this bigger. So we have an x and y between, it's basically an integer, which is 32 bits. Um, so 1 and 4, the output would be 2, because 1 binary is this, 4 in binary is this. So we see that they're the same at this and this, but they're different at this and this. So this has to do with bit manipulation, um, and all we need to do is count where the bits are different. So, um, part of understanding this, we want to ask if there's going to be negative numbers because the bits would be different, but in this case, it's from 0 to 2 to the 31st power, which is 32-bit integer. Um, and we just want to see where in each location, if we have 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, where how many bits of these two numbers are different? And obviously, this will be a 32-bit number, so there will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0, like that, if, assuming this is positive. Um, so what we would want to return is this, we have a counter 1, 2, these are the same, this is the same, this is the same, and then this is different. So we'd want to return 3. And using bit manipulation, if we have one bit, what we can do is, if you have an, uh, a bit, so let's say you have an on bit, and then you have an off bit. That's actually just, uh, we can go through some of the operators, and or not. Well, let's go through combinations of two. So there's also XOR. Um, I actually forgot how you do XOR in, what, what, what's the symbol? <coughs> ah, that one, okay. So this is basically the carrot. Um, those are the three main ones we wanna take a look at for right now, um, and or XOR. So if you have uh, two numbers, you have A and B. Sorry for the messiness, but. So you have 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. <coughs> 0 and 0 is 0, 0, and 1 is 0, 0, 1 and 0 is 0, but then 1 and 1 is this. So we can see that when the two bits are different, this is the case we want to worry about. We want this output to be one, and the other, this and this output to be zero. So zero and zero is zero, zero and one is one, one, and then this is also one. So while we do have these two um, being one, the problem is that this is also one. And <clears throat> you could do a check you could combine uh, the two. So you could say um, you use A or B and not A and B. Um, but XOR kind of allows us to do this. So 0, XOR 0 is basically when the two bits are different. So this is 0. 0, XOR 1 is 1. So, uh, 1, XOR 0 is 1. And then this is 0 because they're not different. Um, and I believe the actual, like, XOR thing is, um, not, uh, I'm actually forgetting it now, but that, that's basically the way it goes, because you can actually take XOR and convert it to one of these and and ORs, or a combination of the two, um, but for right now, it's, it's going over the top of my head, but we know that we have to use this XOR at, a uh, for every bit, and then if um, the output is one, then you want to 
uh, increment your counter. So we know we have to use bit manipulation. Let's go ahead and plan and pseudocode this. So while the two numbers are in zero, while A is not zero and B is not zero, um, compare each bit. Um, if this, if they're not the same, if not same, increment counter. Uh, I spelled that wrong. Whatever counter, and then I'll just continue iterating through bits. And um, once you've done that, just return counter. So the uh, hard part, which I can't remember right now, is how to compare or how to grab each bit. Um, because we have these numbers, such as let's just take one zero one and then zero one one. What we want to do is take this last bit and XOR it. Or actually, what we can do is just take this whole number, XOR it with this whole number, and then iterate through that new number to see which bits are equal to 1. Because if we do an XOR, an exclusive OR on these two numbers, our output will be one, one, zero. That will be our new number. And we store that in a new variable. So let's say temp is equal to this. Now what we do is we uh, check each bit if it's one, uh, then we increment the counter. And to do that, to check if a bit is one, um, all you have to do is get this bit and it with one. And if that output is one, it's true. believe. So, um, yeah, when you, when you end it with this one, if you get one, that means the bit is turned on, else the bit is turned off. Because one in binary is 0, 0, 0, 0, 32 of those, one. So, for example, with this, we see that this bit is off, then we ship right, so now it's one, one. We'll compare these two, it's a one, it outputs one, ship right, and now we're comparing these two, and yeah, cool. So the process of uh, doing this is all we have to do is a x or b, c is equal to a x or b, and then instead of doing while a doesn't equal zero and b doesn't equal zero, all we have to do is while c does not equal zero. And then instead of comparing each bit, all we have to do is check if the last bit is turned on. Check if bits are turned on. So instead of being the same, all it has to be is if uh, bit one, if the bit is on, you want to increment your counter, else you continue. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, hopefully I'm not missing anything, but let's go ahead and implement it. So we said we want to have a temp is equal to x or x, x or y. Um, once we have that while temp not equal to zero, we want to also have a counter, and then at the end we will return this counter. So while this temp doesn't equal zero, um, what we want to do is end it with one. So result. Well, if we get zero, so we can just say counter plus 
equals temp and one. Let's just put parentheses around that to, for ourselves to know uh, what's going on. Um, so if a bit isn't turned on, if a bit isn't turned on, in this case we had one, one, zero, and then we're ending it with one. So zero and one gives you zero. So when you do counter plus equal of zero, um, you'll add zero, the counter remains the same. But if you have, when you shift right now, you have one, one, and then one, this one and this one get added to be one. So you'll add one to the counter, which is exactly what we want. So counter plus equals that, and then what we want to do is temp, I believe it's like that, or do we have to do temp equals? Let's just try it out. I can't remember the, if we have to do temp equals that, or just temp, I think we have to do temp equals this. Yeah. So this, this operator here, this greater than, and then greater than again, is basically shift the, uh, shift the number one bit to the right. Um, I know there's a difference between this and this. This would keep the sign or something like that. Can't remember it uh, straight off the top of my head, but most of the time I remember in interviews we'll get asked something like this or this um, for bit manipulation questions. But this is basically what we wanted to accomplish. So we did C is A, X, or B, and then while C doesn't equal zero, check if the bit is on. Um, if it's on, we add it to the counter, else we just add zero, and then we want to return the counter. So let's go ahead and run this. Hopefully I did it right. Yeah, cool. So my answer was two, the expected answer was two for one and four. Let's go ahead and submit it. And it was accepted. So that was a pretty straightforward uh, problem. Let's go ahead and check the uh, what people have discussed or solutions. There's no solution, let's check the discussion. So this guy used XOR and he did while XOR is greater than zero. Interesting. XOR is going to equal this. Okay, he did it a different way. So he used this thing called the Brian Kernigan's algorithm, which runs an O uh, number of set bits, and the worst case is O of log n when all bits are set. So our solution is also O of log n, where n is the, the number of bits, I'm uh, sorry, um, O of n, where n is the number. So each, each integer is represented with a 32-bit 30 um, bits. Each number is represented with 32 bits. So the maximum you can have is 2 to the 31 uh, numbers. So, which isn't, it's not bad. Um, but he had it where O to the number of set bits. And space complexity, ours is also O of one. So this is really interesting. I've never actually seen this algorithm before. It's really cool. Um, let's see some other one. Java one line solution. Interesting. Integer dot bit count. Okay. Interesting. So I didn't know that there was a bit count thing, um, but it's good that we use XOR because it shows that we were logical about something and used our logic to implement the solution. Um, let's just see one more and that's it. Let's take a look at one in Python. So binary of X and Y. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that's doing. Uh, I don't remember my Python, but uh, that's basically it. Uh, this was a pretty simple problem and we returned what we wanted. Uh, we did it in log of n time, which is pretty great, and uh, O of 1 space, because our space was not dependent on uh, the size of the input. Um, that'll be it for this video, and I'm going to get on to the next one.